Hello, people. We are back. Act to the podcast, episode 174. We are back for another episode of Us. It's your boy, International Walk. It's your girl, Tosh, the co-hostess with the mostest. And we back, we back, we back. Y'all know where y'all can find us on Instagram, on YouTube, TikTok, on Facebook, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Podcast Index, Podchaser, Google Podcasts, Player FM. That's where you can find our faces. Type us in and we'll pop up. Go check us out. We got pretty dope conversations. Um good chemistry between us so go check us out or listen to us um you don't gotta watch us maybe you don't like our faces but you you know we, we got soothing voices um what's let's up? get right to it what's up how are you what's up Walt? <laughs> i'm good i'm good i'm i'm i'm, I'm great mentally <clears throat> i don't want to lie i don't want to lie to the people i was going to say i'm a 10 i'm a nine but i feel great work um the people it's the people. Oh, man. We ain't. <laughs> yeah, but I feel amazing. Um, you know, I'm really going good. on tour? I think we should go. Who? Martin. Believe that? I, I going could. On tour. And he's going on like 45 cities. I could see Martin. Yeah. I like Martin's Brooklyn, comedy. He's you not know, coming not a, to Philly, but he's going to Brooklyn. Not a fan of the TV show, but I could see Martin. He is, his stand-up is... You are a fan of the TV show. You just didn't like everything about the tv show well yeah I, but i mean but you are a fan of martin oh absolutely you know I'm, but I mean? i'm not getting wanting... like the 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 extent that some characters went i didn't like through. mama pain i didn't like the little snotty nose boy i didn't like the karate man i didn't like any the of the karate man i didn't like any of the extra characters that Did i like, like otis yeah, he, yeah, don't yeah. you know no good that's Otis, don't you know no oh, well, good? Well, uh, no well, that was the, the white, man. white boy Bob. no that was your wrong wrong yeah. <laughs> Bob, he was okay. I mean, again, it's it's. You it's, ain't like the kung fu dude? No. Yeah, I love the kung fu no. dude. And Mama Payne was the worst. Shanae? She was she was Come good, but now. she was a little extra. I like when she forever Shanae <laughs> when she had a crush on. See, her you kid. was a fan of Martin. You just didn't like some. I of the he did twelve characters, so it's okay. I mean, you didn't like three or four. I absolutely was a fan when it first came out. I don't, that's not one of like the shows that I care to see the repeats. No, but you'll watch Family Matter repeats. No, I haven't seen that in a while either. But, you know, I like, I, you know, it just wasn't, just wasn't my favorite. I'll watch my wife and kids, you know. And just Martin just wasn't my favorite. Doesn't make me a bad person. No. Back to how I am doing. I am doing great. I'm a nine. Mentally, I feel good. I had a therapy session today, which was so much more than I ever imagined that it would be. That's peace. Um, we'll talk about that um, another time. But, you know, I, I feel amazing. Um, financially, we are a nine. Always room for improvement. But God continues to bless us. I just look forward to his continual blessings to allow us to be a blessing to others. Um, work is a nine. I'm going to leave that there. It's all good for me. But people... <laughs> but I feel good physically. Physically, I feel great. I'm gonna say I'm a nine there too. You know, um, I, I'm I'm still making strides to be able to get my workouts in as much as I can. Three days this week was good for me compared to last week. Um, and I, I'm yes, I'm feeling, yes, yes. I'm feeling good. I, I'm not feeling down on myself. Three days is better than zero days. And um, yeah, I feel good. I feel good. Working out makes like I felt sluggish at the beginning of this week, and working out, you know, it, it. I was talking to my sister today, and she was, you know, talking about small strides that she's making in her life to be healthy and to make a change. And she was saying like, I don't know if I will ever be one of those people that love working out or that enjoys it. And I told her it's for me. It's one of them things that some days I want to go not because I love working out. I love how I feel as a result of me working out. And it might sound the same, but it's really not. Like, I love the sense of accomplishment. I love the, the stress relief. I love feeling like I'm getting stronger. If I could get that feeling from something else, <laughs> then, all, you know, great. But I can't, so you I got to do it to work out. Drugs, meth, well, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the tea will fall out and start looking like shit. Yeah, I mean, and today we kind of had a different kind of workout, which I really enjoy. And I think, too, that that's what it is for me. We do a great job. My trainer does a great job at mixing it up. I'm a person, like, 
I don't, I don't claim to have ADHD at all. Like, that ain't my life. But I don't like um, monotony. monotony in anything. Like, I gotta mix it up. I get bored really fast. And if I'm not, it's like, even in a job, if you're doing the same thing, same thing, day in and day out and day in and day out, you don't feel as um, motivated for me to do it because it's like, all right, what's next? I need something different. There's a fine line with that, though, because sometimes you have to be disciplined and you have to show yourself discipline. So sometimes you got to stick with a program. You know what I'm saying? And I get what you're saying. I receive that mixing it up is a good thing. And you do, I like you do a good job. Yeah, I yeah. like to be on a treadmill, be on the elliptical, like mix the exercises up. But sometimes it's just about sticking with a program. And that's something that I don't know about you. I can't speak for you, but in my life, I've never really did anything like that and followed through with it. Mm -hmm. So it feels good to just show that myself that I have the discipline. Even when you don't see results, you can get discouraged and be like, man, I want my body to change, but just keep going. Just keep showing up. Yeah. So, I mean, I enjoy the mix up that, that you provide um, for us. But again, I loved going outside and walking today. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to, you know, one day going outside and playing basketball or playing tennis. So like, Again, it's just a fear. It's not like, oh, I'm going, swimming. I'm going to the gym. Urgh. But it's like, oh, I know how I'm going to feel. So. I know how I'm going to feel after this. So, yeah. Um, That's good. How are uh, you? I feel like a nine mentally. Head feel good. Wrapping this job up. Um, uh, finances, um, I would say is a nine. I would say eight and a half. Want to leave a little bit extra room for some extra growth. As 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 as, I, as I, I'm trying to do now, um, work I would say is a solid ten because it's it's closing down and mm -hmm. I'm moving on. Mm -hmm. um, physically, I feel great. Um, I feel great in a sense that I hurt great. Mm, Body so hurts, good. but it but it feels great. I know why I hurt. I'm not hurt because I'm stagnant or hurt because you know I ain't running or I ain't doing shit. I'm hurt because I'm active, mm. and that's a good hurt for me. So. That's how I feel. That's how I am. Wows and woes, ups, downs, stops and goes, blacks, whites. Um, my wow again. I just pipes. had a really good um therapy session. It was, it was just it was really good. Um, Talk to your doctor. Get your mind right. Why you keep interrupting me? I'm just <laughs> talking to your doctor. Got your mind right. Y'all see how rude he's being? Um, that was that was just a wow for me. It was just really good. Um. And then I, you know, oh, well, I will say um, prayers to uh, one of my good, good, good girlfriends, my sis from high school. We've been friends for almost 30 years who um, suffered a loss of um, gun violence, um, happened uh, across the country. Um, and, you know, I know that she is hurting right now. But just hearing, like, this this, this was a young person who wasn't in the hood, who was went to college, doing the right thing, you know, enjoying their youthful years and just something crazy happens. It just, it makes you feel like, damn, like the, the, the unfairness and uncertainty in life can be very heavy. And who's to say what's fair, right? I mean, I was going to say that that's a little bit, uh, but I mean, that's how I feel. It's like, who's to say what's fair? You know, the, uh, a little girl losing their mom at two years old is unfair or, you know, a mom losing their only child is unfair. Or, you know, a dad losing his whole family in a car accident is unfair. So, I mean, again, fairness is Person subjective. Having no parents at all is unfair. Fairness is subjective, but, you know, it's just one of them things that, again, the uncertainty and, and what is perceived to be unfairness in life can be very heavy. So, just prayers to those who are um, grieving, who've suffered a loss, especially as Mother's Day you know, is is this is this is that season and people having to endure that kind of pain and grief. How are you? I mean, um, no, what's your wilds and woes? Wild is just making it another week. Um, been enjoying my uh, Bible studies I've been getting from you. Um, really be, been looking forward to that. So that's made the week a lot better. It's crazy. You start off you know, with God, and it kind of sets the tone for your day. Even if you don't start off with God, if you just start off happy and positive, it sets the tone for your day. But when you add God in it, it's a, it's a whole different ball game because you kind of, if you surrender yourself in the morning and say, whatever happens today, you're guiding my steps, mm. then 
you know, I can I can live with the results of the day, whether it's stressful or not. My steps was guided by him, you know, first thing in the morning. This is what I was supposed to go through today, and I'm strong enough to get through it. So that's how I've been looking at it, and that's how this week unfolded for me. Um, no wild, no um, no woes at all. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's it. Let me ask you a question, right? Sure. So we are working Americans. Mm -hmm. um, you're blue collar. I'm kind of white collar, but you know we make a pretty good living. Like you know we we pay all of our bills. You know we you we we ain't never had nothing turned off. We ain't never had no eviction notices, nothing repo, none of that. Um, with that being said, what do you think is a fair amount of money and i'm not talking about like of course you got 10 million dollars that's all well again right i'm talking about a reasonable you know quote unquote normal again that's subjective a blue but collar a, white collar salary not a right millionaire. for right for um you to feel that in this society you could live comfortably like let's and and again not living extravagantly but you know four vacations a year you know, you shop a little as you want, you eat out, you know, you take care of your home, you pay your bills, you got a little, ne a nice nest egg. Um, it's funny that you say that because I, I have a, something to reference from, from the Census Bureau, and then I'm going to read this and then we can get into it. So from the Census Bureau income groups, poor to near poor is $32,048 or less. Thir wait, wait, say $32,048 or less. Okay. You're poor to near poor considered broke. Um, lower middle class is is thirty two thousand forty eight dollars up to fifty three thousand four hundred and thirteen dollars. You're considered very poor. Lower middle lower middle class. If you're in the middle class, you're considered upper poor, and you make fifty three thousand four hundred and thirteen dollars to a hundred and six thousand eight hundred twenty seven thousand eight hundred and twenty seven dollars. That's called upper poor. Upper poor. That's middle class. Okay. Okay. Upper middle class is surviving. And you make between one hundred and six, one hundred and six thousand eight hundred and twenty-seven dollars up to three hundred and seventy-three thousand eight hundred and ninety-four dollars, and that's upper middle class and surviving. And then you have rich, which is middle class, and you make three hundred and seventy-three thousand eight hundred and ninety-four dollars and up. And that's like official from the Census Bureau calling people upper poor. No, that's what. Society. Oh, I want to say they what call it poor to near poor, lower middle class, middle class, upper middle class, rich. Somebody else just put that there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Wow. Okay. So yeah, I mean, so what would so that in be saying said, that I I think in today's society you would have to to live com now. Let's define comfortable. Like just real quick for the sake of the conversation, comfortable means. Um, you don't live check to check. You can pretty much go and buy what you want when you want to. For, Within reason, right. For your, whatever level you're on, mm -hmm. okay? Um, you can go out eat dinner any night of the week you want to. Um. You can save money. You can save. That's a, that's a big thing that you're able to save. You have, um, ancillary income. So that's considered, that's, that's comfortable. I think to do that, you need to make at least a hundred grand and up. Mm. Okay. And it it is it very You mean per individual. Yeah, because if you're single and you make a hundred grand, that's pretty good that you can probably have in a nice apartment. Um you can go out to dinner when you want. You can buy the things that you need when you want. You don't have, you know, no kids or anything like or anything like that. Now if you're a family of four and you only make a hundred thousand dollars. You have a wife and two kids. Right. That may that's seem a, that can that's, be a struggle. That's a stretch. Depending yeah. on where you live, because again, it's subjective. If you're if you're a family of four, you you have a, you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year, and you choose to remain living in you know your, the home you grew up in, you know where it may not be that expensive, then you probably can have. But so, if you are living in you know a house that I don't want to say your dream home, but you know, you're living in a better quality area or home than yet. I think if you want to be comfortable and do all those things, starting 100000 I think top end, you need to be touching a quarter of a million dollars. 
Okay. I was thinking 150 to 250. So yeah, the top so, end, yeah. Okay, and, so and you're only 50,000 in different for, people. I think for an individual minimum, 150. And then, okay, so my 100,000 was based on a single person. If you're not single, then you're, I'm, I'm at your 150. But I think no, top, I'm saying even if you're not single, like if you're a married I know, I couple, what you said. I'm saying each person 150. I'm saying if you're single and you make a hundred grand, you're you're fine. Yes, agree, agree. I think if you got one kid, you need to bump that up to one fifty. Well, okay, so that's I, what I'm saying. And then if you got two kids, you might need to be in the range of th that we're talking about one fifty to two fifty. So I think as a single person, <clears throat> one fifty, and this is to have you know a nice. I'm thinking of like you know these nice apartments they're building. Like I ain't talking about you paying three thousand dollars a month. But a but nice damn sure apartment. Too. Yeah, yeah, a nice <laughs> apartment. So I'm thinking, you know, you got a nice car. Maybe it, ain't, it may not be, you know, um, a Porsche, but you got a nice car. You know, your bills are paid. You do a little shopping. You do a little eating out. You do a little saving. You live a good, comfortable life. You know, you may, you keep up on your maintenance, your hair, your nails, all that kind of stuff. If you're a woman or other things, if you're a man. I'm thinking 150 to be comfortable as an individual. If you have a child, I think you need an additional fifty thousand on that for mm -hmm. each kid. So if you're single you know with what? one kid, with you. two hundred. Single with two kids, two fifty. I agree with you. If you're single to live comfortably and save, yes. you probably need one fifty, yeah. not a hundred. Because a hundred you'll probably just be at the, you know, just staying afloat. Not not feeling like you're threatened, but just staying afloat. At one fifty you can comfortably save money see it grow and still do all the shit that you want to do. And it's a shame because that's not to say somebody that's making 75000 a year as a single individual, you they probably have a great job, they're making good money, but it's just in this... And it's also circumstantial to where we live. Yeah. Because in, and your lifestyle. In because Alabama, you could probably live an amazing life. In New York City, that 75000 You you might have to get a part-time job. Would you think lifestyle also? Because of the, if, let's just say the person that makes $73,000 a year, like you said, is single. They got a decent apartment, maybe. And if your lifestyle doesn't lend to fancy restaurants, you can eat dinner every night at um, Applebee's or... Uh, yeah. a, a TGI Fridays and not, you know, not it not be hundreds of dollars is what I'm saying, but you still eating out, you still getting the luxury of not cooking. I'm just going out and somebody waiting on me. Yeah. It's just your lifestyle of where you want to do that at. Yeah, all of those factors are subjective because I mean, the person making 50,000 who probably right can do the same you know, thing. May if they not eat, eat at the out Chinese at store yeah. at, every night. It's and like they just comfortable. Yeah, but it's like that's something that's, you know, I don't have to cook. Somebody's they I'm going to get food. It's it's like a uh, something you look forward to. Yeah, a, a luxury of sorts. And yeah. the luxury being that you can do it when you want. It doesn't pose any issue to you. You don't got to rob Peter to pay Paul. So, I mean, yeah, everything is subjective. But that's why I'm just, I, I think in this society with the way that things are priced, the, with the way things cost, like I was saying, I think I mentioned this last week, me having like an allergy flare up and going to buy medicine. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at the generic medicine because one, I wasn't Which sure if I it was- never good. take, but go ahead. It was CVS brand, it worked. But I was looking at it because one, I don't normally deal with allergies. And not only that, um, I know from my profession and, and just from um, generic medication and, uh, and brand name medication are exactly the same. They just can't make a generic version because when brand names come out, they're patented. That's why Mucinex was so expensive for so long because I think they had a 13-year patent. So Once that patent comfortable... expired, then people were able to say... Do you farm... feel comfortable saying that across the board? With I... medication? Yeah. Yes. Okay. With medication, yes. So I don't want every, generic. Every every brand medication when it turns when it when it turns to a generic brand, all the ingredients that was in the the brand name is exactly the same as the generic across the board in every medication. Um, I'm gonna say, I, okay, I don't want to speak of anything in to, in totality. Okay. So I'm going to say ninety percent yes. Okay, that's why I yes. was asking, and that's why some insurance companies may only. I mean, this is a financial thing too, not to get into the weeds of it, but some insurance companies 
will only cover the brand. Like some people may have to get a brand name of something because there may be some small differences in a generic that you may be allergic to. So it's like, I can't take this. I have to take the brand. Or there may be just some factors where, you know, for whatever reason, the brand has been proven. But wouldn't that be something that wouldn't that be something to be called to? Because if that is there's something that's in a generic brand that I'm allergic to, that is telling me that there's different ingredients or maybe one ingredient has changed or maybe two. That's why I said I wouldn't speak to in totality to say all, but most. Yes. and And that's why for all drugs. No, I'm sorry. For most drugs, un, un, um, unless it's still like patented, there is a generic substitute. Right. So. And I kind of, uh, w- w- I would agree with 90% because a Tylenol has to work like a Tylenol. Acetaminophen. Yeah, it has you know, to, like those ibuprofen things. Ibuprofen is ibuprofen. Motrin. Yeah, those things have to work exactly how the, the other shit works. But when you start talking about medication like um, diabetes medication or, I don't know, just like a... Dis- um, MS medication, like I don't, I, I just don't know. I'm well, not saying it is. I'm just, I would be weary that if I had MS and they tried to give me generic medication, I wouldn't just be like, okay. I would think to myself, well, can I afford the brand? Well, a lot of those medications are so specialized. There probably isn't a generic anyway. Okay. There's because they're so specialized in what they do, and then you have some medications like you'll hear commercials for like Humira is one that just pops in my head that you know it's for psoriasis, but then you also which is like a skin disorder, but then you also can use it for Crohn's disease, which is a digestional issue. But because they're both autoimmune diseases, and I don't know what causes either, but that medication, so medications can be used for different purposes. Look at Rogaine that, you know, is used for hair. So, 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 so wouldn't that be like, okay, they made an autoimmune medication. So wouldn't that, if somebody said this is an autoimmune medication, I would think this helps all autoimmune problems. If, so, if somebody, what was the name of it? Humira. If somebody said this is Humira and it's for, uh, it's for eczema, and only eczema, then I would think something's well, wrong. But if it's just an autoimmune medicine, I would think it helps most autoimmune problems. But but autoimmune diseases. And I didn't med- know that those two things you said was autoimmune problems. Autoimmune diseases uh, manifest themselves in different. Like you could have Crohn's disease, I can have Crohn's disease, and it affects us differently. And what what medication works for you may not work for me. Right. So that's why it's like yes, it's an autoimmune disease, so it works in different ways. But it it may not work for you at all. And or your your you know Crohn's medication may work for my psoriasis. You know, or like Rogaine was it was originally um I think it was for blood pressure. Or it was for heart medication. Heart, okay, heart medication, and they realized your hair can grow. <laughs> so, I don't know what it's doing for your heart that it pops your follicles. Exa- out. Yeah, it makes your hair grow, and it's That's like crazy. oh, just like the Ozempic was is diabetes medication, and now look how it's being marketed. So was Viagra. That was that was supposed to be a heart medication, also. And then look, look how it's, it's now really being got your marketed. Penis hard, which makes sense because it gets blood flowing, opens up your valves, and gets blood flowing, so you get an erection. Right. So I say all that to say, back to the cost of the world <laughs> medication, I go to buy allergy medicine. The minimum cost was $18. And I'm like, yeah. eight, 18 for generic? So, I mean, in this society, things are extremely expensive. Like you That's making- another thing that you're going to need money for. Like, if you, God forbid, you get sick. Like, medication is so fucking high. Like, you, like, that costs a lot of money, too. Prescriptions and stuff. If you're not insured or anything like that. Oh, like, if you're not insured. Yeah, yeah, like, prescriptions are out this way. When you hear stuff on the news that people choose this, the rent over the medicine, or, you know, I can't get my kid this medicine, asthma medicine, because I got to pay bills. Like, that shit ain't ain't right at all. Well, I mean, I think that's when people have to think about their priorities. Because why don't you have health insurance? Maybe they can't. They, you're a person in health insurance. Like, is it is it plausible that everybody should? Or, or can some people, like, be in a situation where they can't? I mean... I don't know. I don't want to put that on your jacket that you just don't do it. Maybe you can't. I'm not saying that that it's always affordable, but again, it comes to priorities. It's something, if you know you have health conditions, it's worth it to pay for the health insurance so that you can pay the minimal cost for medication. Like if you, if your child or you need medication that's $400 a month, okay, pay, 
if you can, if you're not eligible for a subsidy for health insurance where maybe you can pay a lower amount, pay the four hundred dollars a month for your health insurance so that then you can pay five, ten, twenty dollars for your medication. Like there are ways around that. I don't have four hundred dollars a month. When people say a family has a four hundred dollar a problem, it sets them back. So what if you don't have four hundred dollars a month? We know people or of people, and I'm sure you do because this is your job. <coughs> that pick high deductibles on insurance just so they can have a, <coughs> a little bit of money <laughs> that's coming out of their check. Yeah. Right. So if people don't want to pay $400, they're going to pick the insurance that takes $112 out their check. Well, the fact that you... Okay, I'm talking about people that don't have a job. The fact that you okay. have a job, yeah, I'm talking about those people who don't have a job um, who maybe can't qualify for Medicaid, which is free. So then you're in that middle class, middle, not class, but you're in that group of people where you have to buy insurance. There are ways that, you know, uh, President Obama implemented the Affordable Care Act where you can get subsidies. I've seen people have health insurance where they pay 37 cents a month. Wow. Because they're in, they don't qualify for Medicaid, but their income is low enough where they get a tax credit from the government to lower their premium. And again, it's about priorities and knowing what you need. Insurance is one of those things. It's better to have it and not need it than, than need, need it and not have it. it seems it's like, like it's car one, insurance. Yeah, and it seems like it's one of those things that's always a problem. You know what I mean? Like either outreach or getting people insurance or getting people like kind of like the vote like it's always an issue and a disconnect in insurance to people insurance companies to people and i think it's the lack of right and, i think it's the lack of education because a, a lot of people just don't understand health insurance a, a, a lot of people don't understand car insurance but they have it because they need to have it i had this conversation also with my sister about somebody who just insists on having limited li or, or only having liability insurance it makes absolutely no sense to have liability insurance because what that means is if you hit somebody right mm -hmm. your insurance is going to pay their car mm -hmm. If your car is damaged, your insurance is not going to pay for your car. So now... Some people's cars are not um, of quality. No, I'm talking position. about a quality okay. car and you have liability insurance. But you know, if you uh, as, if you have a certain quality car, you have to have full People coverage. drop it and... and, and, and the, think about the DMV. You think they're going through checking everybody's coverage to make sure that they're maintaining full coverage? No, no. Listen, just listen. To, just, just let me land a plane here. I think it works in a computer system now where if you buy a car from a reputable um, a, a dealership and you have to have full coverage and you drop it, it is reported to Harrisburg and they will suspend your registration without you even knowing that. So if you buy it from a, a reputable place, now I'm not saying if you went to a buy here, pay here place that it would work like that. But if you went to a, a Cadillac dealership or something and they said, listen, off this lot, this car needs to have full coverage insurance. And a month later, you, you put just um, liability insurance on it. They're going to know. I don't think they're reporting that back to the dealership. I think they, you're paying your, your note. They're not reporting back that you made those changes on the car. Okay. I, I, I don't I don't think that that's how that works. Yeah, you I, have to I think it does. I, because I know people that and we know people and I'll tell you after the show that that change their insurance to have just liability so it can lessen their premium. Now if you I drop know, your insurance. I know the person that changed their insurance from uh, from full coverage to liability and got caught. Their, their their registration was suspended because they didn't carry the full coverage insurance that the dealership required on that car and it was a new car. So that's just one person I know. Right, okay, and I, I mean, again, all I'm saying is people have a lack of understanding about insurance. And I'll tell you after we get off the show who that is. People have a lack of understanding about insurance, which is why they'll have liability insurance. Whether However old your car is, like my car is an older car, but I need my car. I mean, so if I have liability and I hit somebody and my car is messed up, it's going to pay for their car. But now I'm SOL, I don't have a car. Or if somebody hits me and they don't have insurance, I'm SOL. My liability ain't covering my car. But, you know, some people, and I get it, you have to count your coins and you have to make sure that you can. It's one of them things, okay, do I decide to feed my kids or pay a higher insurance rate? 
And with health insurance, it's even worse because people, they just don't understand. They don't understand. They think, I mean, even, you know, transparency with you. You thought, okay, I got insurance. I can just tell the doctor I want to do this test or I can, I want to go here or I want to do this. And it's like, I was a little ignorant to it. Yeah, you don't know. There are restrictions. There are parameters that you have to work within. Even being around you and I see that you do an awesome job and, you know, your status and your company and all that stuff that you do. And your new job now, I see, I hear the conversations that you be doing and, and outreach and helping people, but everybody don't care like you as far as who work for the insurance oh, company. Absolutely. Especially when you're talking about calling a call center and, get, and getting somebody who don't give a shit or waiting to get off work. They're not getting a supervisor who has the time to take a half hour to explain or even speak in a different language to somebody. Like that's, it's, so it, I don't know why there's always a disconnect. It makes me think like that's the way they want it to be. Like, why doesn't this system run seamlessly where people that that live in this country can get insurance and go to the hospital when they need to and it not be a problem with them bitching about costs, y'all hiding costs, y'all charging a, 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 a different price for the same thing for different people. Like, all that shit is weird to me. Like, why is the disconnect there? So I I just would think like I would want it to be seamless where it's like nobody bitches about insurance because everybody's happy with it. We gotta move to Canada. Yeah, that's true. In a socialized economy where you know health health insurance ain't even it's free for everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody get the same shit, so you know that person getting cared for just like you are. Yeah, but I mean in life we know everybody's situation isn't the same, which leads me to another question that I have for you. Shoot, like I mentioned earlier. We're in this season, Mother's Day, um, and I saw somebody um, post something, which it was beautiful. It was like a muffins with mom kind of thing at their school, right? Um, And then we know some schools have like daddy-daughter dances. Um, Some schools have events for grand... I remember when I was younger, and I think this still goes on, where they have events for grandparents' day, Mm. where you come in and, you know, you have donuts or something like that. Um... Do you think that schools should not have those kind of functions? Because how does it isolate or make the children feel that, you know, when it's muffins for mom, they don't have no mom. It's not even a matter if your mom don't want to participate, but like you just don't have a mom or daddy daughter dance like you don't have a dad. Like, do you think schools should do away with those kind of um, like uh, parent specific or family member specific activities? Hell no. Like, I mean, life isn't fair. And it's, it's, that's a, that's a true statement. That's a, that's a real thing. And, um, everybody don't have moms. Everybody don't have dads, but more people do than don't. So I, you can't like say, we're going to X people out that do have moms and dads because of the people that don't. So, you know, I mean, it's been that way since time immemorial. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a sad thing, but you're a part of a group of people, too. You have a fraternity, too. There's people out there who have your same story. And so it's not like you're isolated and lonely. Like, But you're talking people... about a second grader when it's like, you I, know... I understand that, but I'm just saying you're not the only second grader in the school that don't have a mom or don't have a dad or, you know, your uncle is coming up or your big brother has to has to be in that place. I mean, it is it is what it is. It's sad. I'm sure it hurts them, but you shouldn't not have a function for the kids that do have moms and dads because of the kids that don't. Yeah, I think they should do away with yeah. it. I I feel like it doesn't hurt. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't hurt anybody to not do it, but it but people kids can get hurt by you doing it. So I mean to say, okay, we're not having a daddy daughter dance this year. We're just having like a school dance for the kids or something. You know, or to say, okay, we're not doing moms with muffins. Like, like I don't think that it's a big deal. Like to not do it, I, I think. Well, it causes... now well, you're moving the goalposts because you didn't. You asked me if they could, if if they should do away with it. You didn't yeah. say if they should alter it. No, because no, you're I'm saying altering I, it by well, saying, no, no, I just oh, said now it's dance. just a dance for the kids. Well, well, that, <laughs> that's, that's being that... inclusive to everybody and not naming it. Well, that's that was just that specific example. I'm talking about doing away with a daddy daughter dance, doing away with parent specific events. Those things are staples in 
a child growing up or a pa a pa if you're a single dad and have a daughter and you're growing up, I would feel a type of way if they took away the daddy-daughter dance. But if they never had it, then okay, it wouldn't even be... Like, let's say we had a kid, right? Yep. And, they, and you know, they're born today. Five years from now, they're in kindergarten. Then they go to first, second, third grade. And it's, it's just never mentioned. Then that's never mentioned. That's for the kid that's born today. For the kids that's out there now and know that this is a part and uh, it's a part of school. It's a part of what it is. And, 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 but that's also acknowledged. Not all schools do this. Right. But so I'm, just I'm just saying, saying you heard of it. You still see it on social media. Daddy, daughter, daddy, daughter day. I never saw the moms and muffins thing, but okay. They got that too. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a part of school where you, a parent can come up and be involved or whatever, you know? So I, I don't think you should do away with it. Now, if that's the answer to that question. Now, if you're saying, should you alter it and say, it's not a daddy daughter dance, it's a dance for the kids. Okay, then I'm with that too. But don't just take it away from other kids because some other kids don't have it. Where does that stop at? I mean, I, I think those are the only things where it is. It, if, if some kids don't have um, clean clothes, like if some kids don't no, have name is... brand clothes, would it be a, a letter sent out saying, okay, we can easily dress our kids in nine name brand clothes and it wouldn't hurt nobody. Well, that has been done. That's why so many schools have implemented uniforms yeah, okay. to not ostracize kids, you know, or they make it so that, you know, you have to wear uniforms and you can only wear black sneakers. Right. Or, you know, you have... Now, that doesn't mean you can't have... You know, this kid can't have black Prada sneakers versus this kid having, you know, black Air Force Ones, but they have made some efforts and strides, you know, in that avenue to, to help not isolate children. Now, again, kids gonna find a way to be cruel because if, if, even if you're wearing uniforms just, and some and this kid's uniforms is dirty, they gonna find yeah. a way. But it's still different. So I mean, again, that's just my opinion. I, and I may be, you know, one man band, but I just feel like it knows. And this is not like a. I mean, I guess it may be a little bit of you know um, internalizing because you know I have some nieces and nephews who you know may not have a parent around to participate in some of those activities. So it's one of them things where I would never want their feelings to be hurt. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I just, when I saw it, it was like, oh, that's nice. But then my heart thinks like, damn, what about the kids that didn't have a mom to bring for muffins? You know, it just kind of, and, and this true. wasn't my family. It was just a post that I seen, but it just made me think like, damn, that's like, that sucks. I, let's just say, and, and this is extreme, but let's just say, you're in the middle of the school year and I'm let's just say for the sake of the conversation or the beginning of the school year and you've been looking forward to oh yeah you've been going with my sister to mommy for muffins now I go to this school where they're doing it at and it's like okay this is gonna be your first mommy with muffins I'm gonna take you and all this and then they they send a letter home saying well for the sensitivity of the kids they don't have a mom we're gonna dead this event this year I think as an eight or nine year old with your mom, you would feel a type of way. You wouldn't be as easy to say, oh, you know, I understand that. And it's it, it's totality. And I'm eight because other kids don't have a mom. Well, you would think you went with my sister for four years. Now I go to the school and they canceling it. I think that, <laughs> I think that's then. And, you know, for the parents to say, you know what? And explain it to the kid like. You know, all kids don't have a mom. So, I mean, yes, kids, kids, I think kids are more flexible and, um, uh, yeah, I think kids are more flexible in those situations and they more adaptable than adults are. So maybe this is just my adult yeah. heart feeling sorry for the kids. And you know, it's your have. kids. So, I, and kids are much more resilient than adults are. Mm -hmm. So even if they know, okay, I'm here, my dad ain't here, I don't have one, I don't know who he is, next week they forgot about that fucking daddy-daughter dance. They're on Maybe. to the next thing. Or, or, or... They'll it remember it when they get grown, but yeah, I'm just or saying... Or it could be a right thing like eight years throughout school, they had daddy-daughter dan dances every year, and I was traumatized, or I was, every time I saw the flyer, it was like a dagger in my heart for it. I ne my mom never went up for muffins. Well, I so, we never had moms for muffins. I do remember grandparents, they though, when having like, I don't, I don't, I can't say I remember who. I want to say it was my grandpa. But maybe not. But I remember having some grandparents day event and like having a grandparent attend something. But we, I, we, I've never had like a daddy daughter dance um, mm -hmm. event at a school or like a miles with muffins thing kind of. So maybe that's if something newer. Do away with it. No, 
alter it, I'm on board with that because I want to be all inclusive to the kids. I don't want to see their feelings hurt either, but I don't want to hurt one side just to satisfy the other. Yeah. Um, while we're talking about school, is college a scam? And let's be honest, or you be honest, I know I will. I think the way college is structured today, yes. It's one of them things where it's like, go to school, get a degree. So you And I see somebody post this, like, kind of play with the numbers, you know, get a degree so you can make this money. You know, we talked about what's a, a comfortable salary. So, you know, you leave school. Everybody doesn't have the luxury of leaving school debt-free because your parents helped you. So you might leave school with $70,000 in debt from tuition. You get a career. If you start your career at $70,000, you are doing great as a college graduate. But you, but again, you got this seventy thousand dollars in debt. They want seven hundred dollars a month in in student loan payments, and it's and there is, and I'm I'm thinking in best case scenario where you finish college and you have this job. Now, let's say you finish college and you know you don't quite get the job that you were seeking. You got to kind of start from the bottom and work your way there where you got student loan payments that you just simply can't afford. Like it's not even, oh, let me prioritize and do, I can't afford this and live life. So it, the way that is structured, and then you when you talk about these Ivy League schools, a lot of times, a lot of these students aren't there on merit. They're there on legacy. Mm -hmm. So it's not and like, you know, you got the top of the top and, you know, here who are, you know, getting these opportunities. And let me just say this. <laughs> One of my nephews, I won't put no names out there, said this to his mom, my sister. Um, these get degrees. So, you know, you got this other, you know, thing around, oh, you got to have a college degree to get this job. Jobs ain't asking for transcripts, so you're giving it. Now, I understand in some fields, you got to have a degree. If you want to be a psychologist, you want to be an accountant. I mean, I don't know why an accountant requires a degree if you learn how to do some math. But, you know, you want to be a psychologist, you want to be a lawyer, you want to be a doctor. You know, there are some fields where there is some additional studies that are needed. But you don't know whether or not this doctor you're you know that you uh you're going to let cut you open did he graduate with a 2.1 gpa versus a four you don't know you just know he graduated like it's not like they say well six times the fucking pass exactly or you know this psychologist that you're going through they could have got through with, by the skin of their teeth and you know they got that degree they got those credentials behind their name so it's it's one of them things where i feel like schools talking about them doing away with things what they did away with was the trade programs that should be a requirement i, I don't want to say a requirement it should be a requirement that all schools have it as an option not to say a requirement that all children but allow some them to get some automotive engineering skills some electrical engineering skills some woodworking skills some plumbing skills you know something that even if they decide to go to college guess what you can have this little side job while you're in school or when you graduate if you can't find that you know dream job that your degree is in while you're working towards finding that you can still be making some residual income because you have this skill that nobody can take away from you you know, allow girls to, I, I, I thought about, you know, cosmetology. I remember back in the day, girls would graduate from Dobbins, Mass Bomb, and Bach with their cosmetology license. Now, they graduate, they got to go to hair school, tuition, student loans. So, my answer, I, yes, it's a scam. I absolutely believe it's a scam. I don't think you need college. And like you said, if you want to go into those professions that require a degree, which that's another conversation. You sh they shouldn't require it. If you can do the job, you can do the job. But because there's people who have the degree who can who who are fucking stupid, <laughs> so that shouldn't be a requirement. But it's absolutely a scam. And I'm not talking about you went to community college and you left with seventy thousand dollars worth of debt. What if you went to fucking Harvard or something like that and you got a few hundred thousand dollars in debt? You you got a uh, a degree in something that you didn't get a job in and you manage Home Depot now. 
So your degree says you were supposed to be making $250,000 a year if you got that job, but now you make $78,000 a year because you manage Home Depot. There's no fucking way in the world you're paying back two, three dollars $300,000 in debt to, to, to give the government back their money, not be in debt, and still like... I'm out here trying to find a job in the field that I'm I'm qualified for. Like it's it's a total scam. You don't need it unless like like she said, you want to be an accountant, if your heart is stuck on that, then you need a degree. If you want to be a um anesthesiologist, then yeah, you need a degree for that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. But you don't it's it shouldn't be required for um jobs that 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 you can do and they can see and you can move up to now you can't start as a, a janitor in a hospital and all of a sudden be doing brain surgery 10 years mm -hmm. later but it don't work like that but other jobs you can definitely move up from within and not need a degree yeah you it's, and it's a total scam for you to have to tell young kids 16 17 years old you need this to succeed like you, right. it's for, it, it, it starts you off on a good path. Now I graduated. I ain't had a job yet. Or if I did, I had summer jobs. And I'm $200,000 in debt at the start where I'm supposed to be got this degree and creating my life. I'm supposed to be like with my high school sweetheart, maybe having some fun, maybe getting married, probably had a kid. And I'm $200,000 in debt from the rip. Well, that's a lot of debt, but I, I get you. Okay, I'm just saying it's a lot, and it's like that. That's ridiculous. Like, how are you ever supposed to climb out of that? Mm -hmm. How are you ever supposed to climb out of that when you at you managing a Home Depot? Like, you're not gonna climb. You'll be 45 years old and still have student loan debt from when you was 19, mm -hmm. and that's ridiculous. That's not a life that you can see that in some some people in society and be like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Like, I'm not setting myself up for that. That's a total scam. This is like like credit cards. That's this the same thing. That's a scam too. Mm. College is a scam just like that. The credit cards is a scam. It's loan sharking, babe. That's exactly what credit cards is. It's telling people, I'll give you a thousand dollars and you you rather be juiced than pay me my than, than pay me my thousand. Some people say, okay, I'll take the thousand for fifteen dollars a month, for fifty dollars a month, for a hundred dollars a month, as long as I get I don't have to get back the whole thousand. That's what with loan sharks. But is. I but I think if you find it to work to your advantage, credit cards can be beneficial. Yeah, in this system. I'm just saying the base of it is loan shark. Yeah. Like it's bookie and that's all it is, the base of it. And people would rather be juiced than pay all at once. Yeah, Everybody but, but I would. Feel like now once you find the loophole in the credit card system right, you where the credit scores money. and all that kind of shit work to your advantage, then you say, oh, okay, this is a game I see that they got. Let me play it. And you yeah. got to learn that. But the base of it is we're loaning your money, you pay us back a little bit at a time, and you owe us forever. But see, that's where you go wrong if you think you can pay back a little bit at a time and make it work. Pay them back a lot of bit at a time. Yeah, you gotta. that's what you got to learn. Yeah. Does that $15 look good? Yeah, pay them back a lot of bit. 500 on my first credit card, I pay you $15. You're like, that, that sounds nice, $15. Mm -hmm. But you realize, oh, I can't keep spending the money because it don't go <laughs> up. It only went up $15. <laughs> Not only that, you get yeah. interest. They didn't replenish my five hundred. It only went up fifteen dollars. Oh, more than you than you paid. Yeah, That's you crazy. Could, yeah. Let's do three grams. Um, I wanted to look at a, something I saw, and we enjoy a good night out, a good dinner at a fancy restaurant. You know, we go to all types of restaurants. I can't tell you how many restaurants we've probably been to every restaurant that you probably could name in twenty three years. From McDonald's mm. to the most We've never been to Sonic or no, Arby's. No, never been to Sonic. No, or Arby's. So they go, that's fast food. Right. Right, right, right. But we've been to a lot. And we've been to some expensive places. And we've been to some not so expensive places. Mm -hmm. But this is a menu from F1 in Miami. Um, this is a, a, a restaurant. So the Bites uh, Chilled Main Lobster Rolls. How much would you think this costs in South Beach, Miami? Oh, we just had... Oh, we owe Chilled Main Lobster Rolls. I'm going to say $60. $280. This is on the bite side. So that's like an appetizer. Yes. Yellowfin tuna poke. Pokey. Pokey. Um, all right. So if a lobster roll is $200, um, tuna pokey, 100 $170. U5 Chilled Prawn. Mustard sauce and cocktail sauce. Um, one fifty. Two ninety. Jesus. Fruit refresher. Pink <laughs> pineapple, watermelon, stone fruit, 
Robotine, kiwi, and coconut granita. Well, a pink pineapple, from what I heard, if you buy the pineapple itself, costs thirty dollars. So I'm thinking a fruit plate, fifty dollars. Nope, one ninety. This is and that was chill. This is one we're gonna. I'm gonna run through the just the appetizers. Warm empanada duo. You want a patty? Mm -hmm. You know I like an empanada. Yep, coconut chicken, mango jalapeno salsa, Angus garlic beef. Ancho sauce. Mm, $75. Buck 70. <laughs> Steam buns. Korean barbecue. Oh, you know we like a bao bun. S Korean barbecue shiitake. Pickled vegetables. Spicy mayo. Lotus chips. 200 Buck 20 Okay. F1 platter. Sliders. Secret sauce. Ribeye. Quesadilla. Chipotle sauce. Chicken tenders. Honey mustard. I don't know. 210 Crispy wing board. So just for some wings. Classic lemon pepper, Thai chili, dips. $100. Buck 90. Jesus Christ. For Last some one. Chicken? Carne asada nachos, creamy salsa verde, salsa mexicano, colada cheese, pickled onion, and cheese sauce. So if the wings is $190, the beef got to be $225. $180. Oh, okay. And I'm just going to say, I'm going to look at one of the drinks. We don't, we don't drink alcohol. But the most expensive on here is an Armand Cognac, Rose. A Rosé. Yeah, three thirty six hundred dollars For the bottle. Yep. The cheapest thing on here is a 16-ounce Miller Lite, $55 <laughs> for a can of beer. Wait, so wait, 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 wait. So F1 was just the Formula One racing yes. that they had there. Yes. Now so I'm that's sure. an actual restaurant or mm -hmm. this was just the menu for the F1 event? I guess the menu for the F1 event. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I mean, that was for the ballers there anyway in Miami. Because you remember they turned like, what is, is it the field or something that they turned into a racetrack? And this is like, you know, the, the rich people that attend the Formula One racing. So, I mean, that that's absolutely, that, and you got to think, right, you know, when you go to any event, like you go to Wells Fargo, you go to Madison Square Garden, you know, your chicken fingers is $30. So that price is spiked up because it's an event, but those prices is, they is have insane. Six tequilas, lowest one five seventy five, next one a thousand, next one sixteen hundred for Don Julio, Chase Azul fourteen hundred, Camos forty eight hundred, and the last one a tequila for twelve thousand dollars a bottle. Yeah, yeah, that that's for that particular event. I mean, it's still insane regardless. But that is crazy. They had a ribeye on there for five hundred dollars. But the people attending that event to them, one, just to be there, you got to be of a certain financial status, and two, they're not going to turn their nose up at the menu because they don't. They they want to maintain that. But it's a thing, babe, that if we go out to dinner and let's just say we spend five hundred dollars on dinner, like. If we wanted Wait, to, not, well, no, if we, we did, yeah, we did. If we really wanted to eat and we went out and we spent five hundred dollars on dinner, it wouldn't hurt us, is what I'm saying. We probably would talk shit to each other, but we wouldn't hurt us. But just to think that we're going to an event and dinner's going to cost us twelve thousand tonight, <laughs> like how is that okay? No matter how much money we got, we could have five million dollars in the bank. We're eating dinner, yeah. and this, even on a high day, this can cost us five hundred. But tonight, twelve thousand. Me and Toya gonna go. We gonna bust it down. You know, me and my boo like to eat some good food. Um, <laughs> it's like no, he say me and my sis go out and spend money like drug dealers. Yeah, y'all need to <laughs> knock that the fuck off. <laughs> I don't even knock that the fuck off. Um, so um, I saw something that said, oh, so it was a, a, a teacher at a school. We've been talking about school. Mm -hmm. Teacher at school. Um, class got done early. A male teacher, his two female students got up and unbraided his hair. Mm -hmm. um, was going to get fired because of inappropriate, you know, th this and this and that. What's the line? Is is it a male teacher having two students, 16, 15 years old, mm -hmm. not young, young kids, 15, 16 years old, unbraiding his hair? If um, I left for work and I'm a teacher and I had braided hair and I came home and told you two of my 16 year old students unbraided my hair and I came home with a fro, you wouldn't tell me that that was inappropriate. I'm not saying you wouldn't be mad at me. I'm not. That's two different things. I don't think you would be mad at me, but I do think you would school me and give me game and say, babe, that might not be okay. 
Okay, so I see the video. I thought it was three girls, but either way, it wasn't like a one-on-one interaction. Right. It was recorded, and he actually responded to it where he was saying, like, mm-hmm. you know, he got sisters. Like, this is what girls like to do. You know, just kind of establishing that rapport with, you know, the girls. And it, it wasn't... I, I do feel like... What's I, the line? I like, don't... I, I, I feel like the line is... It's like six in one hand, half dozen in the other. To be honest, I think it should have never been posted. I don't think we, there should be no touching. If I mean, we had a daughter, we wouldn't want our daughter to be undoing her her, her male teacher's hair. He's 30-something years old. Our daughter's 16. We would tell our daughter, don't do that no more. We, we I probably would say don't do it anymore just because of the perception that it could give. But it also would depend on us knowing and, you know what kind of teacher what kind of person what mm-hmm. kind of relationship what you know um dyna- what kind of dynamic and, and rapport was between the teacher and the students because one of the things i feel like in in this society and i had actually commented on this um when i seen it on social media it's it's really really sad that this society is so over sexualized and so disproportionately sexually abused that we see inappropriateness in so many things. And and and, and uh-huh. I do I feel like while yes we have to protect and be vigilant to protect the children, we also have to be careful how we like what we put on people's jackets to make it seem like he's doing something inappropriate or he should lose his job because he's established this rapport with these students. What if he was a gay man? Does that make it different? So I'm going to give you pushback because I know you and you're my wife. So I'm going to give you pushback on this and I want you to stand in what you're saying and be honest. I think you see more wrong in situations like that than anybody I've ever known. I agree. We've been out places and people have been playing in the park and you stopped and Mid conversation, I had to be like, "What is wrong with you?" And your your whole frame was like, "That man is with that girl," and it's like, "Who do with his daughter? She's a young girl. Is she okay?" Like, so you see things. So when you say society sees things, I'm including in, myself. No, okay, no, I, I'm about I'm, to say because it sound a little bit like no, you're no, contradicting I'm including myself. No, I'm including myself. That's I'm including myself when I say society. I'm including myself on those who. Um, you know, d- d- uh, are sexual abuse victims. I'm including myself in seeing sexual inappropriateness in so many things that may not necessarily be. But for myself, when I saw this, I too had to kind of take a step back from how I usually think and say to myself, okay, what's really wrong with this? He not sitting in between anybody's legs. It's not a one-on-one thing. The you know the girls aren't dressed inappropriately. They're not staring, gazing it's, into it's each the, other's eyes. The whole eyes. touching thing is inappropriate. I, son or daughter, if my son went to school with braids and came home with a fro and said his hot teacher or his teacher took out his hair, I would have a problem with that. I would want to know what's the line. Like why is wait, wait, wait. hold on? Let me get my shit. Let me land a plane. Why is the teacher touching the student? Why is the student touching the teacher? I would be like, this is the protection. So when we say we want to protect the kids, yeah, there may not be anything going on. But as a protection, we draw this line where we say, you don't touch the kids, the kids don't touch you. There's no inappropriate stuff. There's no ambiguous stuff going on where somebody can perceive something wrong. So we stay away from that kind of stuff where your name can't even come up with okay, you was too close to a student. Why? Because you carry yourself that way. But when you say class is done early, y'all done the test, come up and if you want, you can undo my hair and record it and post it, then you open the door for that kind of shit because parents will think this is inappropriate. There's touching going on. Well, see, I think think that's where I say it's like six in one hand, half dozen in the other. He recorded it to avoid there being any accusations because you can see what's happening and and it was no no kind of what can be deemed inappropriate touching in a sexual manner i'm gonna cut you off we know some well we don't know but we have seen tv and stuff like that pedophiles can be getting off just by you touching them so if he's sitting there with a hard Johnson and getting off in his pants just because young girls are playing in my hair, that's all he needs for the day. But he he could be, if, and if, we don't know that that's happening, and we don't know that it's not happening. Okay, so let me ask you this: let let let's let's take a step back. 
is that is it because they're opposite sex so is okay let's say you are a male teacher and you have a male student who come to school and you know he you know he a little rough and rugged you could tell like his family you know don't really have no money and you notice like damn he don't never had no haircut you decide let me bring my clippers to school one day and you know you tell him you know on your lunch break come back over to the classroom and you you line him up you shape him up no, I think that's he, inappropriate yeah i think that's inappropriate i think that's inappropriate for you to do because you don't just like um myself i experienced this when i cut our nephew's hair years ago and your sister didn't want his hair cut that low. But I thought, okay, he's walking around. He don't have no haircut. He wasn't with like, you know, involved with his pop at the time. He, he didn't, wasn't going to the barbershop. It was like, oh, shit, I got clippers. I can line them up. But it was like, I felt so bad because it was like, I should have asked, like, how do you want his hair cut? You have been asking for it. And it's like, I just did it. Well, and I'm, I not, felt I'm not talking like, about a little kid. I'm talking about a 16-year-old. No, I, wouldn't, I would want to tell his mom or somebody that, you know, I'm going to. I'm going to do this. Like, I'm willing to do... I'm offering a favor. Like, you know, I see that you come to school with a little bit of this. I got some extra clothes at the house. I just want to let you know. One of the clothes and stuff, I don't think I would say nothing. But haircut, yeah, I would definitely say something. Okay. I would give them clothes to take home and I wouldn't think nothing about that. I'm just but talking, about, talking down, about hair and I'm talking about you shaping them up because you see, it's, it, school started in September, it's January, and he ain't had a haircut since the first day. You 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 would think that it's... To be been, honest with you, 16 or something, I probably would line them up. Okay. Now I I went to school with a girl and she I, I think now she's actually a principal, but she was a kindergarten first grade teacher something like that. And she had talked this was years ago. She had talked about having a little girl in her class who would come to school looking like ain't nobody care about her. And she would take it upon herself, you know, she would keep a little brush and a little scrunchies and just brush her hair like not a whole bunch of ponytails, but just brush her hair. And I thought like, wow, that's so dope to have a teacher to do something like that. So I think that's where, you know, when you talk about the line, is it because it's man and woman or, or you know, male and yeah, female? Okay, okay but what if he's a homosexual? It, I don't know Does that. Does that matter? Like, I don't know that. And perception is reality. If you're talking about not in the court of law, if you're talking about just people, perception is reality. Let's say a teacher like Sweet Tea has her hair braided and her two boy students come take her hair out. They moms walk in. It looks away. It's it also, all I'm saying is it looks away. But it I looks a little inappropriate. It's almost like if I had the option to pick whether or not this happens, I would rather it not. I agree that it can look that way and I agree to avoid that perception it probably shouldn't happen. The fact that it did, though, I think is so unfair for now society, which, again, is one of these... I don't like, think it should be fired. Yeah, right, but I think it's one of the negative parts of social media where it's like, damn, you went too far for content. Because uh, yeah. now you open yourself up to public opinion. And, and I think, too, sometimes for people... One, because of this content-driven society, you want to do stuff to post it for the gram. But then sometimes I think when you know your heart is in the right place and you know you don't have any salacious thoughts behind what's going on, you don't think to yourself, nah, maybe I shouldn't do this. Because you're just not thinking that way. But maybe you're but not that good at reading the room. Yeah. And you should just read the room and understand, I know I don't think like this. I but know nothing's going think, on. Yeah. But people around here, other teachers walk in here and see me sitting in a chair. I'm supposed to be teaching these kids, but they smart. The class got over early. They unbraided my hair. Like, they may walk in and be like, okay, I've teached here 25 years. I ain't never seen no shit like this. And I'm, I don't think he should be fired, but I do think he should be told, bro. Don't do this again. All this um, content making in the class, that's dead that. Teach the kids, go home, make your content. But all this tripod in the class and all this shit, nah. That's that's let's dead that. Yeah. Like there's a that's like a teacher having an OnlyFans or something. Like where's the line at where it's like I don't want my teacher, my son's teacher, my daughter's teacher having an OnlyFans, or there I don't want them to touch each other because if these are sixteen year old kids. 31 of them in there in the class. 31 of them got phones. They can go on your OnlyFans anytime they want and see you butt-ass naked doing whatever you want to do. And tomorrow you're teaching a, a, a math problem. It is a little inappropriate is all I'm saying. Whatever that word means, that's all I'm saying that the situation is. It's inappropriate. And if I had the option to say, would I want my son to have a teacher without an OnlyFans or with one, it would be without. 
but but we're okay so where do we draw the line with that too about what you do in your personal life versus your work life because what if my job said we don't want you being an employee here because of you know you're on this podcast there's marijuana smoke you represent us and we just feel like it's a conflict of interest you wouldn't quit your job just to do the podcast so you would be off the podcast, is what I'm saying. But what, what, what? But that's what I'm saying. What if they fired me, or, or you know, was like, okay, this is a conflict of, like, so that that's like, where, where do you draw the line in that? Like, this is, this is outside of work. This is none of your business. And then when I do my job, I do my job. Yeah, I, 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 I don't, I don't know where you draw the line, but I know if my, if my kids can see you naked doing sexual things, that's past the line. So I don't know where the line is, but I know that is way over. I mean, the line. don't get me My wrong. My teacher I don't should think not be able to see she... Mrs. Johnson's having sex tonight, and tomorrow you're in there like, "Good morning. This is the problem we're doing." You shouldn't have that deep of a kid. And you know, all these kids got phones. You know, all this shit is is reachable. Even if you got, you know, adult supervision and block this, and you got to pay for this, a paywall and all that, it's reachable. Kids will find a way. Yeah. So okay. Well, what about like we know of? A, I mean, we don't know her, but we know of a girl who is a nurse, but also a stripper. Mm. It's like okay, when when you come in the hospital, should should the patients, you know, be able to see your ass cheeks Thursday through Sunday? I'm sure and it's it, doctors and they're throwing ones on her. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, you know, that might not be. A, you know, bad thing there, but yeah, yeah it's got to be aligned with education. Like, my kid is distracted. He saw your ass wide open last night. He is distracted. I think it's you wonder why he got like, a fucking F? He on your OnlyFans two hours a night. <laughs> That's why he got a goddamn F. I mean, yeah, if it's like, okay, would you prefer them have it or not? You would prefer them not. But I think, you know, the teacher, I, they better go out of their way to make sure that it's, it, it is hitting as Best as they can. As best as you can. Yeah. Um, let's do a wrap. Act to the podcast, episode 174, coming to a close. Again, you can catch us on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Podcast Index, Podchaser, Google Podcasts, Player FM. It's your boy, International Walk. It's your girl, Tosh, the co-host is with the most. Throw it to her. <laughs> Just a reminder to everyone to lead with love. You never know what people may be going through. So be kind. It doesn't cost you anything. Kindness is free. You fuck with us. You fuck with us. If you don't, you should. Peace.